Okay, I will use uh, for this demonstration a rough mix. So forgive me if it doesn't sound right, doesn't sound finished nor polished, but it's okay to use for the auto gain demonstration. Uh, it's of course, uh, as usual, one of the songs I recorded uh, some time ago. So no, no worries. Uh, I'm I'm gonna just use uh, auto gain uh, as a mean to automate the vocal writing on two different buses, one for the background vocals and the other for the main vocal. Then we can also try to use auto gain on the bus track to make room for the uh, for the kick. Let's try that. I don't know if it work. It 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 will work with this track, but as a demonstration. I think it's fine and so i think it's time to start so first i'm going to explain what exactly auto gain is and uh, auto gain the auto gain family of plugins are uh, designed to automate the volume writing that you usually do in the old time in back in the day when you had large analog mixers or even today, if you have faders, um, that you do to make sure that the track you want uh, to put a focus on always stays uh, right above the level of the rest of the music. Or, or, or um, the opposite. I mean, if there is a track that um, uh, works against some other track and uh, you want to lower it again while the other plays. Uh, you usually do that uh, riding the faders with, with the fingers and lower it down until the track is finished and then bringing them up again. With the auto gain plugins, you can uh, do that automatically using the right reference. So it's an aid that makes you save time and gives you a, a rough automation that sometimes uh, works perfectly fine. Other times you need to modify that, but you can record the automation. I usually don't do that because I'm, I'm happy with the, the way uh, the plugins do by themselves. But if you want, you can record the automation for the auto game plugins and then add it afterwards in the DAW so you can change um, how the plugins detected and uh, modified the level of the sound. Of course, they cannot interact with the DAW fader, so it's an internal gain in the plugin. So once you have set the plugin, you cannot remove that, uh, otherwise it won't work unless you copy that automation to the DAW fader. Uh, but I think uh, it's a little bit over the top, it's too much. In this way, you get a trim on the fader leaving the plugin as, as it is there. You get a trim on the fader so you can uh, change the overall level of the track while keeping the same movement the other game uh, gave. So I think it's more useful to leave the other game there. Um, but I see, I see there already uh, there are some questions. So Tony asks, uh, would you leave the other game plugin on the final mix or permanently make the adjustment on the track? track? I usually leave the plugin there, uh, as I was saying, um, because it's more useful, in my opinion. Uh, so we have three main different auto gain in our catalog. <clears throat> uh, we have the first one we made, which is the regular auto gain. And uh, it's a simple, I, I'm going to explain how they work internally, because I think this helps you understand how to use them and how they do what they do. Uh, basically. Um, the signal is split in uh, into path. You have the main one that is the the, um, the the path that actually changes the volume, the gain of uh, um, of your track, which has uh, let's call it a gain control unit, like you have in a compressor in a VCA, for example. Then you have an external control that, in turns, changes the gain of the first one. And uh, it does it accordingly to a set of uh, time constants with uh, the attack and release. 
and uh, RMS evaluation and uh, volume increase. So you have some kind of controls on the control track on the control path that actually changes the amount of gain applied to the original signal. Uh, this is how the original auto gain works. And in fact, you need an external source to drive uh, the original auto gain, uh, usually a side chain, an external side chain, a reference um, that uh, can be uh, another bus uh, or a single track uh, so that uh, um, the original auto gain receives the control from uh, the source you want to use as a reference. I mean, for example, you want to keep uh, uh, your um, the classic example. You have your lead singer singing on the song. You want uh, that his voice to be always uh, uh, on top of the music. So you create a bus and you root there all of the music, uh, drums, bass, guitars, and whatever. And on the other bus, you have all the vocals. And you put auto gain on the vocals bus, and you use the other the music bus as a source reference for the auto gain so that uh, the plugin can listen to the level of the music every time and adjust the gain of the vocal bus so that it's always at the same level or above that you decide. Uh, so if the music gets louder, the vocals get louder. So it's uh, a matter of keeping everything at the right level. Uh, Tony asked, am I right? Thinking that if you automate the volume in Reaper, you can still adjust uh, the track volume is there, does it mess up the automation? Well, if you leave the plugin there, you can simply edit the automation it wrote and leave the fader alone and just use the fader as a general level for the track. So uh, increasing the, the fader will also increase uh, the, the level of the automation because it comes before the fader. So... Uh, Chris asked if auto gain will be possible in a live auto situation. Of course, yes, of course. Uh, in fact, the overall idea come from, um, well, a little background. When I was uh, a lot younger, I used to uh, work in a, in a small radio here. And uh, we had this ducking compressor that when a speaker starts to talk, automatically they lowered the volume of the music uh, that was playing. So the speaker was able to talk on um, on the music, to speak above the music and be audible. Uh, a lot of speakers preferred to do it manually, just riding the fader while talking. Uh, but we also had this automatic ducking compressor. And this is the idea behind the game. So you have one reference, which is the music. The other one is the voice. And you automate everything. Uh, using the music as a reference and the voice as the other track. So, of course, it can be used in a live situation. Uh, it's just a matter of tuning the, the time um, constant correctly. So, uh, let me share the screen and I'll, I'll show you one typical application with this uh, rough track. Okay, so uh, I'll share my desktop. And here it is. Let me share the computer audio. Share computer sounds. High fidelity. And here we are. Let me know if you can hear it. Can you hear something when I started the music? Could you hear? Yes, great, great. Now I learned how to do that. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> the first webinar I was <laughs> a little bit um, embarrassed because <laughs> it was not working, but now it is. So that's great. That's great. Um... Okay, so. Now, we have uh, a song here, which is mainly made by its classic rock song. So we have drums, we have bass, we have the vocals, and we have um, the background vocals, 
we have guitars. Let me, and we have keyboards. Okay, uh, let me make them small so we can handle that. And we have the main bottles. Okay, here we are. So, what I want to do is uh, create a new track. I'm gonna move it over here and call it uh, the my AG bus. I mean, because this is the bus I will use to drive the auto gain. So, uh, I don't want to hear this bus on the master output of my console, my virtual console. So I will disable the master send. So uh, when I uh, route my groups to this um, bus, they won't be on the output. So I'm not going to hear them. Uh, I just want to use this bus to drive the external input, the, the standard source, uh, the reference source, sorry, of the auto gain. So I'm gonna add send to my AG bus for my drums. I'm gonna add another send for my bass. Now, another send again for my guitars. And another send for the keyboards. There is a faster way of doing that in Reaper, but I want to use this bus uh, thing because this is more universal. So you can do that on every DAW. Every DAW has aux buses and sends and receives. So this is more universal. So <laughs> yes, Chris. Hi, TJ. This is live, of course. <laughs> <laughs> how old how old is he or she how old is he is he's five nice i have a three year old daughter so i know what you're talking about when it comes to to babies so <laughs> yeah let me get back to the auto game thing now that i have my auto game bus over here i'm gonna Simply add out again the regular one, the oldest one to my vocal track. Well, it says no side chain input detected because we are actually not feeding that with the control signal. So this this is just to inform you that he is not receiving any input, so he cannot do anything. If, for example, I press play now. We are not going to do anything because we just get down because we don't have any type C, any type C in there. So um, let's feed it with a side chain. So I'm adding a new send from my auto game bus to the vocals bus. And uh, I'm routing that audio to the side chain control. So it's track three and four. And now if I press play, you see that we are receiving some input and the auto gain is already modulating the, the gain to make sure that the vocal tracks, vocal track is right at the same level of uh, um, the music the, the the reference bus we use so the the rest of the music um of course this same level is relative to the parameters we have set so uh the sensitivity the range and the speed what they actually do well sensitivity is a uh, again control on the side chain signal so that means that 100% is uh, uh, zero gain if you increase sensitivity, you're actually increasing the level of what comes from the this bus inside out again. So the track with the plugin will be more sensitive to volume changes from this bus. 
from the control uh, signal. Range is uh, the maximum excursion that you can have in your game. So this is a multiplier. So that means that uh, if, uh, for example, uh, our game would have applied um, 6 dB of gain with a range at 50%, it will apply 3 dB of gain because it gets multiplied by 0 0.5, 0 0.5, by 50%. Uh, so you uh, will never be able to reach the full range un unless this is 100%. And this is uh, set to 50% because uh, I found that is more natural than setting that to 100%. I'll show you. You have a jump down there that is not actually really right. Much the level of the level. So if I bring it back, it's more natural. Um, and the speed, of course, is the speed of change. So if I, this is the slowest, uh, the slower possible, and this is the fastest. And uh, if I change, it actually changes uh, both attack and release of the envelope follower in the control chain, the control signal um, path at the same time. Uh, with the Pro and the Pro MK2, you have separate control for uh, the attack and release. So you can have this. Actually, let, let's bring it back to the real world. Uh, this is this, the the speed at which at which you are moving the fader to um, account for the changes in the um, in the music. Uh, if uh, you with with this plugin, you have the same speed rising and lowering the fader. Uh, with the Pro One, you can uh, rise the fader faster and then release it slower, or do the opposite. So you can choose. You have more freedom. Mm, of course, uh, it's more complicated. This is more tailored to vocal processing uh, in the usual application because it's easier and gets you faster to the to the result. But if you have, uh, if you need more control, uh, you need the pro version. And uh, let let me let me just hear what, what's going on so I can tweak it to make it sound more or less good. Okay, uh, the, the the background vocals, the the singing in an IEA is on another bus, so it's not being affected by this plugin right now. Let's see how it behaves on the verse. Okay, pretty important the track bus was missing so <laughs> that is uh, something that changes quite a lot
you see what what's happening here. Uh, have you noticed that when the guitar uh, kicks in, the volume is lowered less than it is when there are no guitars, because this plugin is has been designed mainly for vocal automation and it has um, a filter on the side chain that focus on the vocal range. So uh, when the guitars kick in. Uh, filters the, the the side chain control level is higher so uh, the vocals is less affected by the plugin because the guitar fights for the vocal range so uh this is the reason why and it's been designed this way i have lowered the speed because the changes was too much i reduced the lay the range because i felt that uh on um, not on this plugin, Chris. Sorry, can I feel the professor? Not not on uh, the original auto gain. The regular auto gain is fixed like fixed like this, and uh, uh, it's like a big preset of the of the auto gain pro. Uh, we have released that for vocal automation. I have designed this plugin for my own needs in the first place, and then uh, upon feedback, I decided to make the pro version, which with much more controls. Uh, yes, Tony, uh, I understand you play guitar and guitar are really full spectrum instruments. And when you have ability to store guitars, you're really occupying, uh, you're really occupying a lot of the vocal space. <laughs> Chris, yes, it's selfish. <laughs> the, the vast, the large part of the main part of the plugin I made are, are made for my own needs uh, and then adapted to the needs of the others because I try to solve problem. And if I have problems uh, while I do my own stuff, probably uh, others have the same problem. This is uh, uh, the thing that got me started into this. Um, I wanted to create some plugin that made easier for me to mix. In fact, the first plugin I made uh, is the first version of the channel strip, which I still use to create a rough mix because it includes uh, two dynamics module and an equalizer that allow me uh, to get a more polished sound of, the, of the, the sound in just one package. So I don't have to use 20 different plugins. I can create uh, the rough mix with this and then move on to, on to creating a more polished mix later with uh, other plugins if I need. Um, Tony, does the channel strip emulate analog gear? Yes, it does, but it's not a direct emulation of any in uh, particular. It's just a uh, uh, general analog flavor stuff. We have the, a VCA compressor, a FAT compressor, and an opto compressor, not exactly emulating anything, but uh, giving you the idea of the sound. Um, and you also have, of course, saturation all across each module. Uh, we have um, an expander that I will, uh, often use as a gate. Uh, we should have here on the drums. I use that at a gate as a gate. Then I have my EQ, uh, which has uh, high pass, low pass, three band, parametric, high shelf, and low shelf. And this is more than enough to to give you to make the the production to give you the idea of the sound. Uh, then I have the compressor. Uh, I can rearrange the, the the path of the the signals, so I have a lot of freedom. I have of course saturation, heat, oversampling. But anyway, this is not about the channel strip. Uh, this is about how to gain, and uh, um, this uh, this plugin over here has been designed essentially to automate vocals, so I can. Put the same plugin on the background vocals. So let's use it all again over here too. We are going to add a new send to the background vocals. So add the new send. This bus. The same send the new three and four inputs 
Okay, uh, this of course varies from dough to dough. Uh, for example, if you have Cubase or Logic, you have the option to choose the side chain directly from the plugin window. So refer to your dough because it changes a lot from dough to dough. Um, and uh, let me see where we have our background vocals, it's here. So uh, Laura, no, I don't know for Studio One right now, sorry. I should I should fire up Studio One and look up, but it's the same as using a sidechain compressor. So you have to provide a sidechain to the plugin. This is actually a sidechain compressor, but it works in the opposite direction. So instead of lowering the gain according to uh, the uh, given ratio, it increases the gain if the volume increases, the side chain increases. Um, that's simple. And uh, let me see how uh, it behaves with the background vocals. As usual, when I stream with Zoom, uh, this starts to break everything. So let me try to increase the buffer size and see if it helps. Now, the nice thing is that, for example, I feel that uh, the um, gain changes made by uh, auto gain are, let's say, wrong because uh, I like the way it follows the level, it fo follows the music, but I think the vocals is too low. For example, I can simply move the faders and get the same movement while changing the overall level. Yeah, this is just an example. And uh, let's try try to write the automation and see what happens. Uh, this is not something that I usually do, so I have to remember how to do that. Okay, I want to get to the automation window and I'll get from the on it out again. I'm gonna get the gain parameter, which is actually the level of this arrow over here. And I'm going to put this track into uh, record mode, if I remember how to do that, of course. Right. OK. Now, I'm going to say right to this um, automation here to this uh, automation mode because this is the one on the vocal and uh, I think I should be able to see the automation recorded on the screen So you see, this is, uh, let me hide the mixer and make this track wider so you can see that. This is the automation produced by AutoGain recorded right onto Reaper. So we can, of course, edit that or leave it as it is. 
and I select red from the automation, no processing is done anymore. I'm gonna say trim red. No processing is done anymore, and the automation is read back from uh, the track. Okay, sorry, I have to set to read because I have this automation over here that should not be here. Let me delete the line. Um, though where 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 it is, I don't remember. Um, points where it is. I don't want this one. Okay. So you see, this automation is being record has been recorded and it's now being played back by the plugin. Um, of course, this is very useful if you want to edit what the plugin is doing. Uh, yes, Tony, you could bounce in place the track, but you lose the ability to change the automation after the fact. And uh, what's what say more? Uh, of course, when you're important. When you write the automation, the UE of the plugin has to be has to stay open because uh, this is uh, the movement of this arrow is what's sending the automation data to the track. So uh, if the the UE is closed, no automation is written. So now I'll, let me clear the automation if I remember how to do that because uh, I rarely do automation. So um i'm more of um a do it by hand guy okay let's turn it off Um, Chris Cabr, uh, you ask uh, for live views with the UE need to open to work. No, uh, if you don't write the automation, the UE can stay closed. No, no worries at all. Uh, the UE needs to be open only if you are writing automation. Okay, so. Uh, now let's move on to AutoGame Pro, which is a, a very similar plugin. But uh, let me take where is where it is where it is. Okay, focus here. Let me replace this with AutoGame Pro. Which is a very similar plugin, but that gives you much more options. Uh, yes, yes, uh, Giuseppe, uh, the, this webinar is being recorded, so um, you will be able to to watch it on YouTube later at a later point. So don't worry. Um, okay, this is the Auto Game Pro. As you can see, you have a lot more options. Uh, this is what I told you before. We have um, the attack and release for the reference, uh, which means uh, the speed at which the plugin reacts uh, to the changes in the control suits. We have the attack and release for the main track. Uh, this is the speed that the plugin changes according to the changes in the main track. Of course, if you have a very percussive track, you want to keep this short. Uh, and if you were to have uh, a more, um, let's say, track with a, an higher average level, you want to keep them slower or, or make them faster, whatever. You have the control here. Then you have the controls on the filter on the, on the side chain. So you can choose 
how much of the sound of each frequency uh, the plugin consider. So if you want a full range, just go to 20, 20 kilohertz. So you, you have the full range over here. Uh, you can adjust the gain of the sidechain, uh, which is equivalent of the sensitivity in the other, the original version, the original auto gain. Then you can choose if you want the RMS detect processor or peak processor. Uh, that means that in the original auto gainer, um, the one that we had already have a, had a look at, um, RMS is used. So uh, the main signal the, is uh, um, computed using an RMS window, uh, which is the same as the attack release time. Uh, so that only the average level is considered for processing. This is because it was designed to be used with vocals. And um, you can use the peak version. So uh, every single peak is uh, considered um, for, the, for the processing. You can reverse the process so it works exactly like a, compre like a compressor. So instead of increasing the gain, it's going to be decreased when the when the refer when the reference gets higher, the main signal gets lower, um, and you have control on the minimum and maximum gain applied. Uh, yes, Mario, I'm going to to let you see how it works. You have uh, control on the minimum and maximum gain applied, and you have the same uh, uh, percentage that you can use to scale the gain applied. Then, of course, you have the automation control. You have the attack and release for the main uh, the main track, uh, the main sorry for the main signal, and you have a switch to make it work like the classic one, uh, the one we just had a look at. Uh, in fact, a lot of switch turn, a lot of control turns off, and you only have this control here. And then you also have this handy switch that uh, it's by default on the external switch, but you can make it internal. That means that an internal uh, reference signal is used, and uh, it's a fixed one. And at this point, this knob. Uh, sets the level of the internal reference signal. Uh, this allows you to keep uh, the main at the level you specify here. You have this true graph that allows you to understand what's going on. And this is very useful if you have voiceovers or, uh, or you're making a podcast and you want to keep the, the level of uh, a speaker uh, always even or something like that. Since this may bring uh, low low signal very high, um, we have a gate. So the processing starts only if the main signal is above the level set by this gate. So for example, if I only choose uh, the vocals here as I put in solo, and I leave to internal the reference of auto gain. Let me see if we have something here. Astronauti, alti, biondi, krauti, spazio, iron, sky, sparatutto, Wolfenstein, dalla terra dei cachi alla terra nunaki, so I'm going to aim for 0 dB for the white line. Anakin. È così grande il vuoto, riempie tutto qua, tutta la nostra storia, un grande cover. At this point, we are having uh, the controls on the attack and release for the main that, of course, changes uh, uh, the way the plugin reacts to fast changes in the main vocal. And we, are, we have the ability to keep uh, the vocal track steady. Uh, it's like having uh, um, someone that all, always rides a fader to keep the level uh, as steady as possible. Uh, 
Let me... Astronauti, alti, biondi, crauti, spazio, iron, sky, spara tutto Wolfenstein Dalla terra dei cachi alla See terra lunachi Sopra uh, the degli sgusci changes, tipo uh, anachi speed. È così if grande I... il vuoto, riempie tutto qua if I change Tutta the attack la nostra and storia, un grande cover Lascia stare i Decide uh, the way it should work. Of course, you can uh, react fast and, and release slower. It's something you have control on. And uh, of course, you can change the scalar, link everything, unlink everything. And if you want to be really aggressive, you can use the peak version. That works on peaks instead of the RMS level. So you see, uh, it changes really fast. Questa materia oscura fatta su misura, punti di sutura sulla verità che spesso fa paura, ma in realtà è la cura, caccio un pugno, un urlo, tipo azura, srat, ecco. So, uh, you have a, a lot of control and you see how it works um, keeping the level as steady as possible. And uh, if I use an external source like with the other smaller out again, uh, I can, of course, assign uh, the, the same send on the, on, on the vo vocal bus. And I see that the, yeah, the white line, which is the reference view, starts moving with the music. Of course, I have control over attack and release of the um, of the time constants uh, of the music for evaluation so i can for example if i want to react faster to drum hits or this is a, a solo mode this of course changes faster and i'm in peak mode right now so I'm gonna aim for a zero dB in the white line. This is uh, something that I will never use because it really moves too fast, but it's just for demonstration purpose. So I can set the release faster, for example. I meant slower, sorry. Okay, this is from the graph something that is more useful. You see, if I if I disable that, the vocal is uh, less glued with the music. Try to listen. It's just a uh, 3dB of action because we have negative six here. Uh, but it makes a world of difference with the way uh, it sounds, the how compact is the vocal with the rest of the music. It sounds more organic, I think, in my opinion. Uh, I will, I'm using a, a drastic uh, attack time now. Maybe I would use something slower for this application, something around 300 milliseconds. Maybe it's better. Um, and I would use RMS, but... So 
So the, um, the main way to work with that is to make sure that the reference is around zero. Uh, so um, it's around zero so that uh, um, the changes are relative to a zero level, uh, to a flat level. Um, because otherwise you're gonna work a lot with the fader. If you keep that uh, to to zero, you can tweak the other parameter uh, to make sure that the the vocals is uh, floating around that zero level. That is the level of the reference. Uh, Mark asks any tip on what type of tracks or situation where you would want to extra control of auto gain pro versus regular auto gain. Um, doesn't use more CPU. Uh, it says, I'm assuming it's more CPU. It doesn't use more CPU because it's this, exactly the same algorithm, but uh, this exposes the internal controls while <clears throat> uh, auto gain doesn't. Uh, it's like uh, a general press, a more specific preset of this parameter. These are all the parameters, all the, the inside the algorithm of the, uh, the, the same parameters that I use in the algorithm uh, of the original auto gain. But but in this version, the pro version, you can tweak them. So uh, you have more control. And the um, it, I think the track you should use it on are those uh, where the original auto gain doesn't give you uh, enough performance. For example, there are some times where you have stops on the music and uh, um, the level of... Uh, of the voice goes up, for example, with the original auto gain because the reference turns down and uh, um, stops altogether. And you still have uh, the release uh, that is uh, maybe slower than what you want. And with this with this plugin, you can choose the attack and release independently, for example. So uh, you, you can tune them to the kind of music you're having. Um, you can, of course, automate them. So if uh, the song has different phases, different passages where um, a part is more rhythmic, another one is more uh, let down. So you, you can change how fast uh, the plugin reacts depending on the, on the song part, something that you cannot do with the other plugin. Uh, you can automate drums using the peak, for example, uh, that you cannot do with the other one. <laughs> you have more control. So uh, it's up to you, really. Um, I tend to use the original auto gain and only move on to the auto gain pro if I find something that is not really working. Uh, but that's because I use uh, this kind of plugin for vocal automation for the most part. For the most part, um, somebody used them for other things, for example, bass automation. And with the original gain, it's not possible because you have a filtered uh, side chain around the vocal range. So uh, with this one, you can, of course, filter that and only use uh, the frequencies that are relative to your bass, for example. Uh, so you know that you are working only on conflicting frequency for the bass. And you can lower the bus level when kicks get in using the reverse button that you cannot do with the other one, uh, uh, and so on. You have more more option. Um, since uh, it's already uh, almost an hour, I'm talking. I just wanna let you see what we can do with the MK2 version. So I will choose the MK2 version here. Uh, let me no, let let me just keep this one here. I'm gonna use it on the master bus. Um, let me just put this back to the fold, so we can have the plugin working on here. I'm gonna use Auto Game Pro M Key Two on the mas on the master bus because, of course, it can do all the things you do with the <clears throat> Auto Game and with Auto Game Pro. You always you also have a classic mode that makes this plugin work like the original auto gain. But of course, you have the stereo mode, which makes this work like the auto gain pro. And you have the mid-side mode, which is typical and only available in Auto Game Pro MK2, 
which allows you to change uh, the different uh, automation uh, for, for the mid and the side part of the signal. This is very useful if you want to enhance the stereo image, for example, uh, while keeping the um, center steady. So I will use one preset because it's, it's faster. And uh, I, for example, set the stereo enhancer and I'll show you how it works. We have two detectors. This one is actually turned off. Detector one, in this case, is set as an internal fix uh, for the source. That is like, it's like setting the internal reference in the Autogame Pro. Um, you can uh, use uh, uh, each of the detector to drive each of the processors. So you have more flexibility here. And uh, this is uh, set to a steady level. So <clears throat> it produces a steady control for the processor. The first processor is uh, um, set as the detector one as a source, and the second one is set as the detector one as a source. So they both have the same detector, but what changes is that, okay, uh, processor one works on the left or the right when set in stereo mode, and on the mid and side when set in mid side mode. So what we're going on, what we are doing here is to not change any gain on the mid on the mid part because we have the scalar set to zero. So we are not changing any any gain. We are not applying any gain change on the mid part of the signal while we are modulating and changing uh, the level of the side signal with a maximum of negative six and uh, a minimum of negative six and maximum of 6 dB of changes according to the side level itself. So we have <clears throat> an internal reference sent to the side level, only to the side level. And uh, we say, okay, side, we want you to be at uh, the specified level we have set here. So negative 18 dBs. So if you are lower than this, you're going to be increased in volume. And if you are higher, you're going to be reduced. So we're going to have a uh, stereo expansion and compression dynamically uh, according to the amount of stereo content we have on the, on the signal itself. So I'm going to show you how it works. Astronauti, alti, biondi, crauti, spazio, aero, sky, spara tutto, Wolfenstein. Dalla terra dei cachi alla terra nunaki, sopra di... You see the game changes. È così grande il vuoto, riempie tutto qua. Tutta la nostra storia, un grande povero. Lascia stare i complotti, tieni chiusi gli occhi che ormai sono corrotti come Cleope. Can you hear that? So this is very funny because the stereo image gets increased and you have uh, a more surround, surrounding effect, let's say, uh, but it's done dynamically. So if the signal has a lot of side content, it gets really increased. Uh, if not, it gets focused on the middle. And you can do the opposite, of course. And if I, for example, select the stereo reducer, it's the same preset, but I have toggled the reverse button. So what happens? When you have a lot of side content, it gets lower in volume. And it works in the opposite direction. This is very interesting. 
And also, uh, this plugin can work as a, a peak enhancer, a peak reducer, since you have different control for <coughs> um, detector and processors, you can use the two envelope that the auto gain has, one in the detector and the other one in the processor, to create uh, um, um, a transient shaper, a sort of transient shaper, because uh, a transient shaper work uh, analyzing the difference between uh, the two, two um, envelope follower detecting the, the transients. One, one envelope detects the overall body, the other one the transients. And then you can, of course, mangle these transients the way you want. And with this plugin, you can do that. So, for example, with a peak and answer preset, I can enhance the peaks in the sound. Of course, I had to adjust uh, attack and release, detect uh, the peaks the way I want, but it it's a more funny thing. It's a really funny thing. So you see the peaks are enhanced. Uh, this is very interesting. And of course you can reduce them. So you can make it work like uh, a compressor. Astronauti, alti, biondi, crauti, spazio, aero, sky, spara tutto, Wolfenstein, dalla terra dei cachi alla terra, nunaki, sopra dei sgusci, tipo Anakin, è così grande il vuoto, riempie tutto qua, tutta la nostra storia, un grande povero. So it's very flexible plugin, and of course it can do all the things you can do with Autogain and Autogain Pro, and also do these other things because it gives you a lot more flexibility. And uh, of course, it's more complicated. So uh, I generally use that uh, uh, when I have to do weird stuff or on the master to enhance the stereo image. Or for example, this preset is like having uh, the internal suits, the internal suits in Autogame Pro with uh for a podcast situation for example the example i gave you before with the vocal alone and uh, bart asked if there are present in auto game pro or auto game classic no no presets available for auto game pro or auto game classic because they are simple plugin and they need to be tailored to the source you are actually working with uh, i decided to give preset for auto game pro mk2 because uh, they help you understand how the plugin works because it's uh, more complicated. This is, for example, very interesting if you have a, a, um, a lots of effects on the vocals and uh, you want to, for example, increase the level of the delay, which is a stereo delay. Um, you can tweak the amount of, um, of sides that you have on the vocals and uh, uh, let them grow when when there are a lot and make the vocal more focused when there is less delay. So it's it's something that really get lets you get more creative. So uh, these are the three plugins. I hope I and I explained you uh, almost everything about them. Uh, you should really get your hands dirty because especially with Auto Game Pro and Key Two, uh, there is a lot to tweak. So. Uh, the, the um, controls are the same of um, the Auto Game Pro. If you had a look here, you understand, you can see that they are the same. They are, the fact is that they are duplicated since it has to work in mid side mode. Um, you have control. It's like having uh, two Auto Game Pro, one on the mid and the other on the side.
Yes, Gregory, that's what I usually do with the stereo answer. Uh, I really put this on the, on the master bus and uh, increase the stereo image dynamically instead of simply increasing the mid side statically uh, because it gets more interesting. Uh, I also use uh, use uh, total EQs with um, a filter set in dynamic mode to do the same because um, it gets more interesting to have the stereo image uh, collapse and expand dynamically than do it that statically. Uh, so you are going to receive a 10% discount on these plugins. So if you want to get them, you have the chance and you're going to receive that tomorrow. So uh, tomorrow at this time, or about this time, uh, it's sent automatically by Zoom. So um, if you have questions, of course, I'm here. Just write me at my email or using our social. Uh, I'm more than happy to reply that. This, of course, is being recorded, so it will be available on YouTube. And uh, what more to say? Uh, have a nice rest of the of the day, evening, or whatever you are. Um, it's uh, twenty p.m. I don't know. It's eight p.m. here, so I'm gonna have dinner. And uh, goodbye, everyone. I hope I um, help you understand better how this works. And of course, let me know. Let me know if you if you get great mixes, if you have better mixes. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone.